grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah Allah grant us the, us a beautific month of Ramadan and to complete His favours granted us a life in which to see the holy month of Shahwal. Every day in the way of Allah is holy. And we pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the realities of the month of Shahwal and the reality of the month of ten, one and nukht, one and nukht. Ramadan was the month in which to be a nukht, a dot. Ramadan is the month in which to annihilate and anyone want they can Google or YouTube the significant power of nine. And in mathematics it actually moves itself to a zero and it's the great crusher and that anyone who participates within the month of Ramadan and fasts within the month of Ramadan, Allah will render them to a nukht, to a nothing. And that most significant in this way of the Divine. Holy month of Shawwal is the power of nine times ten because after the nine we're moving towards the Divinely Kingdom. And this is under the 90th name of Allah Al-Mani, the one whom prevents harm. And under the 90th name of Sayyidina Muhammad Ni'matullah, the blessings of Allah That the one who prevents harm, its key is Ni'matullah. If we want prevention of harm, that Allah's name that protects us from harm, its key is Sayyidina Ni'matullah, Sayyidina Muhammad Surat al-Balad in the city and the importance of entering that city of light and the reality of the city. And alhamdulillah the dhikr of this month, it's tajalli and the dhikr meaning that what Allah is eternally dressing Nurul Muhammadi is Subhana Mandul Arshi Amma Yasifoon. Glory be to the owner of the throne above all else attributed to him. And that is the power of ten and the reality of ten and the reality of moving into the presence of the throne. Subhana man dolarshi amma yasifoon. So alhamdulillah the month of Shawwal is one and nukht and that brings for us binary code. <clears throat> and what we talked in Ramadan was magnetism and binary code. Magnetism and binary code. Magnetism is an energy and the movement of this energy back and forth. This is the reality of the soul and this is the reality of our soul and energy. If we want our soul moving towards Allah then we learn magnetism. And when we want our soul to move towards holy people, we learn magnetism. And when we want to receive fires and energy and du'as and blessings, because we're speaking a different language. People who have been programmed with Islam, they speak words that they have memorized but have no understanding whatsoever, right? So there's a jargon in Islam. Please make du'a for me. What does that mean? That this and that and all these words that we use but we don't know because it's just our culture, it becomes a cultural thing, we're just saying words. So these words when we break down its understanding we're going into like the science and the physiology of the soul. And the science of the soul and this world of light and this world of energy is going to be based on this binary code on and off, who's on, who's off. That on and off means charge and no charge. If Allah send the energy, that's on. When Allah push the energy away, it's off. All our electronics, all our technology is based on this power on, power off. This is what makes the circuit, goes on and off, on and off. When it's on, it's a plus. When it's off it's a minus. So in Ramadan 
the talk came because of the understanding that's the month of negation, a great month in which Allah is crushing the servant in a beautific way, not through accidents and calamities and tragedies but just fast for me. And I'll crush you in a way you can't imagine and make you like dust because everything's in Allah's hands. This is the greatness, this is the, the immense power of Allah I'll do whatever He wants. I can reward anyone however I want and the reward one and the, the most amazing one of its understandings is ghashiya, to be dust and nothing. And that by the fast Allah render the servant into an ocean of nothingness. So then this binary code or recap for that is that our whole life is called Islam and Taslim, Islam and Taslim. And when we make salawats we say, Taslima, Ya inna Allahi wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi wa sallu alayhi wa sallimu Taslima. And the play on words is you can only achieve Taslima if you Taslim. Allah will dress you with a beautific Taslima, a beautific fragrance and character but its reality is that you really have to Taslim which means submit. So Islam is all about this energy. Islam means submit, means what? Be negative. You're going to take the negative charge, Allah is the positive. Take a path in which to be nothing, no one, no one, no, no, never be the one. It's in the word. And as a result of not being the one, Allah asks then, submit, Islam. As soon as you Islam, and that's why we say it's not a noun, it's a, it's a verb, it's an action. Every aspect of my life when I understood this is then I'm going to be the negative and I'm asking to move towards the positive towards Allah and everything that Allah loves is positive and me, I'm negative. I have my character defects that I'm trying to rid myself from and that's why I have to submit. I don't submit to myself, I don't trust myself, I don't want myself, I don't want my ego. So I become someone whom is trying and struggling to be nothing. As I become nothing and keep myself a nuqt, a dot, a nothing, Allah then says, you will draw close to me. If you realize and bring yourself to nothing, its exchange will be that you move towards Allah And it has to be at the level of the soul, not the mind. Where you accepted Islam in your mind and they say, they came to Prophet the Arabi and said, we believe. Belief is the level of the soul and Allah clarified, no, 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 tell them they merely accepted you. Belief is not so easy, means in our life is not that we just accepted Islam but are we living Islam? And living Islam is very simple, you're negative, Allah's positive. And any reference towards moving to the Divine, my life was to render myself to be nothing. If I lower my charge then Allah's juzbah and energy will begin to dress me and pull me towards His Divinely realities and that's on and off. And in our lives when we understood that, that the magnetism, the draw towards Allah, so how can you submit? That's why people are trying to find Islam through their head or they're trying to submit through their head. And awliyaullah come from their teachings and their connections to teaching. 
This is not through the head because that's not Islam, you won't enter into anything. You'll think you're in Islam, you think that you accepted something but you don't feel anything and before you know their Islam is very crazy, out doing all sorts of crazy things and they post it. Now everyone can see the sins of people that they glorify their sins. And you watch with your family and loved ones, say, wow, what is that? Is that in Islam? Say, absolutely not. And they're hoping they can post it enough so that the bad becomes normal and everybody can begin to do these bad things. It has nothing to do with Islam. The, all the, the horrible social media and the things that people are talking about, a lady in niqab is talking about all sorts of private issues in, in, in marital relationships, fully haram. That that's a, a commitment to be hidden when you put these hijab and niqab and all of these, you are to be hidden, not seen, not heard. You break that covenant with Allah Islam is a is an action, so our life is to be nothing. If we master that nothingness, then Allah give us the path of the nothing, join them. They are the servants of that reality and all their teaching will teach us, be nothing. And all the du'as of these Sultanul Awliyas, look at their du'as, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm coming to your door, absolutely nothing, with nothing, I have no character, nothing I'm proud of. Not that you're going to accept my salah, you're going to accept my zakah, you're going to accept anything. I have no idea what you're going to accept, I render it to be nothing, I'm coming to your door just as a slave, faqeer and abdukul aji, so da'ifu, miskeen, zalim wa jahal. I have all the categories that you already said you're going to be punishing, I'm of those Ya Rabbi. No need to beat me down to prove I'm one of those, I already told you I am one of those, I'm nothing. And as much as our path towards that one, because if that's our path is to Islam and to Allah be nothing. As a nothing you begin to enter to the reality of Layl because Allah says, I made the day yawm for your business and your work. I didn't make your yawm for your nothingness, means that's a time of manifestation. So Allah knows what He created, your day is manifest, your night is annihilation. Why? Because go dark, nobody see you, nobody hear you, nobody even knows you're there. They become the masters of annihilation. That's why you don't get too many shaykhs in a room because it's like peacocks, they're all one. And as a result they have a very difficult time in each other's presence. But you see a big wali who shows himself as completely nothing in the presence of other shaykhs. He comes like he's a servant for them, nothing, nothing, nothing because those are the real ones. Everyone else is like a rooster. When they understood this system then imagine approaching Allah you learn to be nothing. And every time they became nothing, Allah addressed them with qudra, Layl Qadr. Prophet wanted that for his nation so he gave them one day, say, out of this whole 360 days, please in the last 10 days of Ramadan try to, because they're going to spend at least half of those, the odd days, trying to meditate. So he got them to at least meditate for five days. And as a result we'll dress them with lights and blessings. Ahlul tafakkur, they're supposed to be meditating every day, contemplating and look for the sins that make them one. Look for the sins that are making you a one. You talk too much, making you one. You show yourself too much, you're making yourself a one, there's a hammer coming. Exposing yourself too much. There's a hammer coming. It doesn't have to be anyone saying it because some people say, oh, I don't like to hear the shaykh say that, I don't want to hear my dad say that, I don't want to see, have my husband say that. No, this is Allah saying that. 
Allah is telling us and teaching us from Islam, I'm one, you're nothing. Shaitan is in this world with you to make you feel like you're one. Then every type of badness that they do, they're not entering into submission. They're entering into oneness. As a result of, of not submitting, they become one. They talk a lot, expose themselves a lot, do every incorrect action because a negative with a negative makes them like they're a positive. So they falsely believe they're one and arrogance and pride enters into them and they're no longer drawing near to Allah. It's how shaykhs can speak and people say, how you can say that? Because the very… the science of it and the science of the soul is all, is all clear, Allah made it to be clear. As long as you become one, you're drawing. So what, what is this word in English? You're repelling, you become repulsive, <laughs> you're repulsive to me. These are words that people… Why, where the root of that was, repulsive, means you're repelling from me. You're not drawing near to me, you're repelling from me, you're becoming repulsive because your oneness that shaitan is putting into your mind is pushing you away from me. I am the one, Allahu Ahad and there is nothing like unto Allah When we mastered that understanding that makes all our life to begin to submit. If we didn't master that at the door, every subsequent understanding will be lost to you. How are you going to submit to your husband? You don't submit to Allah. How are you going to submit to Prophet You don't submit to Allah How do you submit to Islam when you don't submit to Allah If through the door we don't understand that and I'm speaking always to myself, it's always a reminder to myself. That the only way the fires and the energy comes, the beautific nights come, if you feel like, oh an energy didn't come, all these beautific things didn't come, well then let's reevaluate. are we submitting? And so then every night you take an accounting, Ya Rabbi what did I do wrong to make myself a one and what could I have done to make myself a nothing? Very simple, what we call muhasaba. And if you look at all these big awliyaullah, very complicated Arabic, very same discussion. So Sayyidina Imam, Sayyidina Abu Yazid al-Bistami, same thing, I thought I was drawing near to you Ya Rabbi and I'm drawing to your door and asking let me in and Allah asking me who's there and say, Abu Yazid and Allah said, go away. I said, how I go away Ya Rabbi, all my life is to come to you and then later, later learn that, Ya Rabbi I'm going to draw to you and Allah said, he heard a voice from a parda saying, who is it? And he said, you, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, then come in. So they have all these qissa and taskiyat al-awliya of the same understanding but our technology is at a place where people are understanding binary code. It was in all of their stories, be nothing you draw next to Allah you draw into Divinely Presence. So then in our life, my muhasaba is what am I doing wrong, every sin that makes me to feel like I'm a one. Oh, I argue with this person, that was one, why did you have to argue with them? You felt hurt, you felt whatever it is, well that would have made you more nothing. When you have to validate and vindicate yourself, you're becoming a one. So then read the qasa of awliya, they would stand at a city entry and smile and people would come and smack them. They didn't like that religious character or person and they actually went to the city place on that wall of the entry and people would abuse them, throw something at them, harm, harm them, never they spoke because they understood that Allah was dressing them. As much as they negated themselves, Allah was giving them qutra. 
until each wali would speak, Sayyidina Abu Yazid al-Bissami you know you look at the audio stories of Naqshbandiya, he was famous Abu Yazid to speak and give sobats and his people would throw rocks at him. They would be confused with his uloom and his knowledges and one time they stoned him so bad that they took him into a state of almost death, they threw him into a garbage heap thinking they finally killed him, got rid of these kind of talks, they threw him in a garbage heap and then the dogs came after him because he started to become a little bit conscious and eat some of the food, the dog came and got angry at him. Then all of a sudden the dogs to, to bother and the dogs got angry, Ya Abu Yazid, what are you doing in this area? This is our food, why are you eating from here? I mean again, again humiliation and he, when he got better he said, Ya Rabbi, from what I've been dressed with, I pray that you make me to be better and I go back again and do that. And they can again stone me. And then Allah gave in Surah Al Yaseen that when a man came to defend Sayyidina Isa's coming for dawah in a village, he came out and told the people, don't harm them because he was from amongst them, these are of Allah's messengers and they stoned him to death. And he said, I wish that my people knew what type of glory Allah has given to me as a result of what they've done. And I would ask Allah, let me to go back and for it to happen again. Means throughout our lives we'll find many examples of being nothing. And our accounting, the ones who want to succeed in tariqah, they understand the talks, my path is nothing. Every night I'll take an account on how I got closer to nothing or how shaitan fooled me to be something. If I defended myself and had to fight everybody back, oh then I put a category that that was one of the be something category, so I moved farther from Allah. If people attacked me, backbited me, that's why I say when they backbite us, don't talk back, don't leave it alone, Allah's raising your servant. Then you became more than nothing. When big people start to attack you, you become more of the nothing. So you took a life in which to take a hisab, which direction am I going? If everything I have to defend, everything I have to fight, everything I have to go over, shaitan is fooling me to be a one. I have to post this, everything inappropriate I got to do, I got to say, I got to say when, when my, my child was born, when my child was sick, when my child is this. For what? Why are you making yourself a one? Keep your life hidden, keep your, your entire character to be hidden. If you want to draw close to Allah, if that's your goal, if your goal is something else, well then that's, that's you know dunya. That will give you, if you become too much one, what happens is then we repel. And as you begin to repel, you begin to come further and further and further away from Islam until you begin to dislike the shaykhs, dislike the heavenly realm, dislike all of uh, what Allah has given and then they start to give debates, wow we need to eat halal, why we have to follow Islamic rule, why we have to do, why, 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 why. And shaitan made them then to think like they're Pharaoh and they're the one. When Pharaoh would say, Ana Rabbi al Ala, I'm the Lord Most High, astaghfirullah. So everything is simple binary code. In my meditation every night, am I drawing closer to the nukht or to the one? What did I do wrong tonight? Did I get closer to one or to the nukht? If it's consistently on the one, you're drawing away from Allah and that's why nothing opens, nothing happening. But if we continuously negate, in Ya Rabbi they attacked, I didn't say, this happened, I didn't say, I take this abuse, take this, take this difficulty, then I become nothing, nothing, nothing. And Allah said, every time you became nothing, I dressed you with qudra, I dressed you with qudra, I dressed you with qudra. Every day of your life is Laylatul Qadr. Not one day I became nothing only for five days out of the month. I sat for five days trying to catch a state of nothingness. 
And you catch it good because you're not talking, you're supposed to be fasting, you're not exhibiting all the wild characteristics. But the tariqah, especially the shaykhs who teach tafakkur and contemplation, then they're teaching specifically this path, take a nightly character assessment. And am I drawing to the dot or am I drawing to the false one, which is the dajjal? And now the time is so dangerous is the one whom is drawing you in that direction is dajjal, he's recruiting. This is not just a, a negative that you don't know where you're going, we know very well there's two forces now operating on this earth. One is Sayyidina Mahdi and all his tajallis and goodness and character, his fires and dresses dressing and dajjal, the accursed. And every time you become more that one, you're moving closer to his, his gravitational pull. And if you go too close into that pull, there's no way to catch you. That gravity will pull you into that and every crazy action. That's why you, you see the people whom are posting. We're now observers and watchers, right? We watch everyone's social profiles. What's this guy doing? He went from looking like this, all of a sudden looking wild, all of a sudden taking his kufi off. And then all of a sudden you see his gravitational field now, he's gone into the dajjal territories where that field will pull the person and pull and strip them of all their Islam. Then they start to post as something else and the story goes a thousand times like that. So anyone who loses their religion, their faith and becomes all these crazy things, they left the field and the gravitational pull of Allah and they went into the accursed. That's why you say, oh why do you think they're accursed? Oh, because they left Allah's field. Allah's greatest field and honour was the love of Sayyidina Muhammad If you are not drawing close to that in these last days of the, the accursed one entered onto this earth, there's no three. You're this side or that side, there's no third side. And every book has the same understanding, there's a heavenly side, thy kingdom come. The kingdom is who? No tailgate parties, drinking and, and being inappropriately dressed. The kingdom of Allah is Ramadan, is fasting and abstinence, good character, charity. Now New York Times posting the most amount of money that flows on charities are Muslims. They all want to get into the understanding of Muslim charity accounts. They say billions are flowing, zakat time back and forth, back and forth, because heavenly kingdom. They're all beautifully white, we're all fasting 30 days for their Lord. Did heavenly kingdom or drinking and doing inappropriate things in, in a parking lot? Because they think they're the kingdom. So this is the kingdom of Allah So then the kingdom will show itself and the accursed one will show himself. So then now these two forces are on this earth. Is your pull going towards negative to be a nukht? If you become nukht, you're drawing close to Allah If through social media and environment and fighting and yelling and screaming and everything in life making you to be one, you're drawing into his territory. And if you pass this middle mark on Squid Games, they had this tug of war, there's a rope where Allah says, hold tight to that rope, there's a flag on this rope. If your flag pushes to this side and you pass Allah's border or limit, the gravitational pull of dajjal, the accursed one will take the servant. And they're in the ocean of a bliss and everything will be bad and angry and everything will be destructive. And that's it, there is no second, there is no other choice, there is no other opportunity in life. Oh, I'll catch it the next bus, not a bus where more are coming. Allah says, you're in the fight of your life right now for your eternal soul. Are you prepared for the heavenly kingdom to come or you're about to surrender yourself and your soul for the accursed one? 
So then this tug of war is now moving, moving. Who's taking themselves to be towards Allah? Then this is very the characteristic, there's no other mental thing, oh I'm very good in my mind, I'm like this, I'm like this, no, no, no. You do your own hisab. If in every action you felt you became more negative, a nukh, the dot, then you drew close to Allah But if in your actions every night are more towards the one, more towards I showed myself, I identified myself, I, I vindicated myself, then I became more the one. That's the danger. When the shaykhs understood that, then Allah gave to them, then the reality of my one is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Qul inni kuntum tuhibboon Allah, because to have the one is to have the love of Allah How do you get the love of Allah You Pray? Allah didn't say, I'm going to give you love if you pray. Pay? Allah didn't say, I give you love if you pay. That would be weird. So what would be the love? What, how to gain Allah's love? Allah gave in Holy Qur'an, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِيُونِي Tell them Prophet people who will be reading this message and people who will be listening to you, tell them if they want my love, if they want to be with the one فَاتَّبِيُونِي follow you with their life, with their death, with their entire existence, I want to be Muhammadiyoon and follow the way of Sayyidina Muhammad who is the master of nukht from prophets who were big and crowned number ones, came and I'm nothing. Although the most powerful prophet of Allah no reviving dead, no lifting carpets and flying in the air, no parting rivers and all from the hand and the, and the power of Sayyidina Muhammad but came onto the earth and showed nothing because he wanted to show the prophets, I am the perfect submission and Abd- Abdullah, I am the one whom is called Abdullah, not a slave but the one whom inherited all the knowledges of Allah want to give to creation, gave because it's an ayn, ba dal. I'm the one whom has Ain and Alim. We said before in other talks, Abdullah, servant, what you call servant, not the one whom cleans for Allah but servanthood for Allah is, I granted you my Ain, my vision because Ain is also seeing and Ain is ancient knowledges. And I gave to Abu Bakr, Ali, Omar, Uthman. They all inherited this ayn because they were all the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad means and I grant you. So when Allah accepts that you want to come to me, you really want to submit to me, then come and open the turuqs into your heart because there's no guidance unless Allah guides. He guides them to the turuqs and the paths that are strings and ropes from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and then again same process. So first is most important, are you submitting to Allah And everything you're doing is to efface yourself and lower yourself and bring your profile down. You didn't achieve anything, you want to be nothing, no one, no one. They don't want to be the one. And the, the false one whom didn't even get anywhere and want to show himself as one. Those are the most dangerous decoys. They have no connection, no nothing and appearing as ones. Why? Because these are the decoys that shaitan begin to push into the heart of people. Not only they won't reach Allah but they reach a wrong one, they, they get nowhere. And that's why the connection is always with the shaykh. The people have to love the shaykh, to learn from the shaykh, to connect to the shaykh and nobody should impersonate to be that one, otherwise you deflect the hearts of people from their shaykh. 
because hearts are like a magnet. If they start talking to you too much, connecting to you too much, you will have deflected them from connecting to the shaykh who connects to Prophet who connects to Allah That's why it's not allowed, the turuqs and the tariqahs don't allow it. Be nothing, be nothing, don't, don't to think that you're a, a fake one because you'll be a deflection on this field. And people will be locking their hearts to the wrong connection and they will have not developed their connection with the shaykh. So when we understood the one and we understood it with all our being, we're drawing near to it. And then Allah began to teach us that, my love is hidden in this one, Wahid, this one whose name is Muhammadun Rasulullah which no Prophet is like it. No Prophet has this dress and this love. Connect your heart and make sure that again your hisab is like that. Every day, am I drawing closer to this love of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's very easy our tafakkur. Every night just thinking, Ya Rabbi what I did wrong to make myself a one instead of being a face. And when I'm a face, Ya Rabbi alhamdulillah give me patience to endure, give me patience to endure and dress me. And then thinking, Ya Rabbi what did I do to draw close to Sayyidina Muhammad what good deeds am I doing that making me go into the taslim and submission to Prophet Oh I gave in his way, I did for the mawlid, I, I supported the love, I attend the majlis, I, I go out and propagate to be a good ambassador for that love and I feel that the nazar of Prophet is happy upon me, then I go, oh I'm now more again into submission. And every time I submit into that love, Prophet dresses with his holy nazar. So everything is a layl qad, the layl qad. Every time you're down, there's a power being dressed upon you. You do good deeds, you feel the presence of Prophet dress, and that's when they begin to cry because his nazar is filled with beautific lights dressing upon the soul. That you go down and comes light into your energy and we talked about this binary code. The shaykhs are trained in this reality. They actually when they connect on a talk at that level they see themselves in submission at the feet of Prophet and they lend their being for the tajalli to enter. They're not present, they're not sharing the ear with each other, they're saying, I'm out, please enter and begin to address, begin to, to dress my physicality and my soul with that presence. And as a result they are in submission in the audience out. That binary code is their entire existence. They're not both on, how could both be in the same field? They go off, they see that one presence come and that light enters in, that light is on, they're off. With that love every day, what I did to draw closer to the love of Prophet or did I come against what Prophet brought for us? If I came against it, I'm moving away from his way, I'm moving away from his holy sunnah, I'm moving away from his holy representation. Then I can feel on that line I'm drifting. So the system of muhasaba very easy. Easy to understand if you understand what we're talking about, difficult to imply, apply. It's easy to understand, you write it, you understand it every night, I'm checking am I getting closer to Prophet or am I drifting? Then I'm drawing away from that reality. And if I'm doing good and understood it, then I begin to understand now the presence of my shaykh. My shaykh represents for me the reflection of the reflection of that reality. From Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum, Izzatullah, Izzat al Rasul wa Izzat al Mu'mineen. Allah is teaching us this Izzah, might, and tajalli is flowing into that. And if you take that as a one and your shaykh is that one, and as a result your life is to practice your nothingness in His presence and His presence is all the time. That's why they give these examples. 
that why, why Shaykh Abdul Qadir told his student, go kill this chicken. I want you to go to make a zabiyah for chicken, we're going to have chicken tonight. But find somewhere where Allah doesn't see you. You think it's, it's entertaining because, oh, well, I, I know Allah's everywhere. He wasn't talking about Allah, he was talking about himself. He was asking the, the student, find a place where you think Allah doesn't see you. Oh, how could Allah not see me? Allah sees me everywhere. Then you have ding in your head. If Allah see you everywhere, the shaykh sees you everywhere. Is it hard for Allah to give a vision, a khashf, a dream, a, a, any type of isharat that you're in trouble, you're doing something? You think your, your life is in a vacuum where you don't know and nobody sees you? You think it's, it's that difficult? Not all day long they're looking at you, they don't need to, they don't want to. But if something comes onto a radar, immediately an image comes, something is in difficulty, pray for this person, pray for this child, pray for this, pray for that. Because Allah is the, the owner, He sees everything. It's a matter of taking this and sending it. If your friend sees something somewhere in this earth, an uh, image or email, immediately they send it to you in two seconds on WhatsApp. Oh look, somebody posted this. You don't think Allah has same technology? So look what this guy is doing. And immediately send you an image or a file, come into your heart, close your eyes, what? So Shaykh Abdul Qadir was teaching his student, where are you going doing the things you do and you don't think Allah will send the information? That you think they're operating like they're blind? Then you're mocking Allah, mocking Prophet definitely mocking the tariqah. So then how are you going to grow into submission like that or think that anything would open? So they had the character in which they understood this power of one is flowing in them. And that one that I feared at the very top, he's dressing his Rasul وسلم, I keep that love and ihtiram and he's dressing his shuyukh. And some may have a very powerful vision to see it all the time or they see what's necessary. All of a sudden a child is sick, they send the information, start praying for this child. In the beginning to immediately make du'a. Means their system and their technology is one million times more powerful than yours. If somebody can send you a video of something happening in India and you're here in Canada, you don't think Allah can send you information? Do you know what this guy is doing? What this child is, is the condition of this child? Instantly, beyond the speed of thought. So then they understood, oh this one, my life is to <laughs> nothing. My life is to be nothing, not talk loud. Whatever you thought you would do in the presence of Prophet you don't do in his presence. You keep the same respect, the same ihtiram because for you should be no distinction in your heart and in your training. The Ya Rabbi, I came into this ocean to be nothing. Then say, okay, practice with them. You're nothing, nothing, nothing. And as a result of drawing nothing, you receive more of their fires because their fires is not by friendship. The fires is not their control. The fires that Allah gave to them a blessing and emanation upon their soul. It's not in his ego's hand to say, I like you, I give to you, I don't like him, I'm not giving to him. This is not, a, this is not an ego cash distribution where you give inheritance based on the kids you like. The fires of the soul is in Allah's hands under the sharat of Prophet that Allah speaks to Prophet because He controls these souls. That, that fire is on that one to be dressed onto that. And it's not through the brain and the, the friendly brain thoughts we have for each other, it's how much the student is negating themselves. Everywhere, on every social platform, on an every event, in their home, at their work, wherever they are, they negate themselves to be nothing and the fires of the shaykh is coming because he has a Laylatul Qadr. 
So it means in the system Allah is making, don't make so much a distinction in your perfection of faith because the one that your shaykh has, there's not two. Allah has a power and the shaykh has a separate power, astaghfirullah. These are both paras people because they think many have power. You go to this guru, he has a power, this one he can move the moons, this one he can move the… the, the this… This power is one power from Allah Izzatullah. And Allah give that izzat like a a cane and give to Nabi Ahmad. And that's why we have the Alif and Ahmad and Nabi Ahmad holds that cane and from the heart of Prophet the izzah goes out to al-mu'mineen. Under their command the souls of the shaykhs are working, 124,000 awliya on this earth. All fires coming from their heart and a sharat from Allah to the alif of Nabi Ahmad and come out. So then Allah teaching in this way be nothing and in their presence negate yourself. If you negate yourself the fires of the shaykh's soul will begin to dress you. If you don't then you begin to repel from the reality of the shaykh. And that's why they tell you, don't be involved in who comes and goes. It's not a social club where you're trying to keep people to be around you. If their character changes and their actions are changing and as a result their belief is changing, they're becoming a one in the presence of the shaykh and Allah push them out of that orbit, get out of that orbit. You can't force anybody to be in that reality. So it means the whole path is about negation. When they understood and they negate, they negate, they negate, they're able to receive these fires. And that's why spiritual growth is so powerful in tariqah because the servant who learned it when they negated with the fellow human being which is so difficult and they understood, I know nothing and he knows. My characters know nothing and even if I know everything, I'll be the one whom is nothing in his presence and Allah keep dressing me with qadr, keep dressing me with qadr. And that's why we say that even in the association of all presumed ones of shaykhs, that's when too many shaykhs don't get along in a room because they're trying to give each other sobats, but the real one who represents Allah is usually very quiet and hidden and trying to hide himself because the, that imitated ones will be angry. So they enter into these zawiyas and associations, nothing, hidden, nothing, nothing, nothing. So that to receive the fires of Allah not like they're going to do da'wah on another shaykh and convince him that he's going to be impressed. So it means everything in our way was nothing, nothing, be nothing, be nothing. Now take that now into your home because if you learn the system, you learn what Allah wants. Man is positive, female is negative. Man is the imam, female is to follow. This is how Allah designed it, you like it, you don't like it, please don't send any bad emails that you're angry. We're not here for, for popularity, it's just here for teaching. And you can't change my opinion because this is something from the heavens. It's not about you change my opinion of something. Allah even they have it everywhere, oh plus sign is for men and they put like an arrow and a plus, this is male, a negative and an arrow and they say this is female. Why? Because Allah says, the original code is that I made Adam in my image, blew my spirit into him, from his rib I made Hawwa which means desire. I made Hawa, Shaykh you can turn your phone off, take your phone out, take it, turn, turn it off. From his rib I made Hawa, right? She comes from where? From him. He's from Allah 
she's from him. He is from Allah that I created Adam السلام, from my hands. I made him and I blew my spirit into his reality. And I made her Hawa which translates as desire from his desire. He didn't want to be alone. I took from his rib, he's one rib short than a female and I made Hawa his wife. So then she's in taslim to him. If they can accomplish that they reach perfection. But shaitan won't allow that. So, oh no, 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 you're not going to be like that. I'm going to make every woman who and, and she represents the nuqt. So she's in taslim and she has an immense power. She brings creation from her womb, from her holy womb. The, all the Prophets of Allah have entered onto this earth except Sayyidina Adam salam. Every saint has come onto this earth. So this is an is a immense station. We just described awliyas and Prophets are also nuqs and Allah dressed them from power. So the nuqt, the negated one is the female, she has an immense power. Her real power is in taslim and with her ishq and muhabbat can influence the one. Because just like the murids, just like the way to Prophet, just like the way to Allah it's the same path. If you turn yourself on in the presence of that one, that man, then now there's two ones. And then what happens into every home is there's two ones, two positive charges. What happens in positive charge? They repel, they're drifting. Because each one now by shaitan is being taught, you are the one. So much so that they want to be men and then shaitan go to the men and say, you are the female, you're negative. Making the men to be women and the women to be men, openly everywhere. So imagine what's happening in the house, in the homes, why people are having difficulty. If they're not understanding this, that's why we started the talk, if you don't understand the step you made into the tariqah that I came in a path to negate myself to reach my Lord. If you truly understood that then your whole path is negate, negate, negate yourself again to reach the reality of Prophet And if you negate yourself to the shaykh you'll reach his fires. And that's why the tariqah has more successful marriages than the dunya, although dunya is at 99% divorce rate. But at least in the tariqahs they're teaching you, taslim, submit, don't let your wildness come out, bring your character to be down, to be low. As a result you're receiving faizes and lights and emanations. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding. This is the month of Shawwal, the month of Hulamandul Arshi Amma Yasifoon to draw near to the presence of that magnificent power. And that dress and light is, is not by the mind but just simple in our life that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And as a result the fires and the dress and the lights inshaAllah to dress us and bless us. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon, As Al Wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha As-Sanaat wa al